Welcome to Fairy Tale Access, where the head fairy's quest is to prove that fairy tales do exist in actual time rather than once upon a time. Together, we will unravel the heroes, young and old, who turn dreams into reality. These are the people who still believe in happily ever after. The discoveries will bend even our most cynical non-believers into believing in fairy tales. Hi, welcome to Fairy Tale Access. Today we have author Elizabeth Lavender from Texas by Skype with the spinning of deception. Thank you for joining us. How are you today? I am good. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay. So give us a little bit of a background into this story. It seemed to have hints of Star Wars, um, but two brothers involved and a dark lord. So tell us how you came up with this story and why you spun it the way you did. Well, it does have a very Star Wars feel. Um, the, the Star Wars environment, uh, the sci-fi part of it is very Star Wars. Um, it does have a lot of other influences, though. Um, so on the fantasy side, the epic part of it as far as the battles and just the way the fantasy part of it runs through is going to be, um, it had a lot of influence from Lord of the Rings. Um, and then there's another battlefront from it that's um, kind of an unseen supernatural element to it. And that had a lot of influence from um, Ted Decker, um, Frank Peretti, that kind of thing. So it has a lot of different things that come together in it. So um, as far as how the story came, um, I've always just enjoyed the um, I have enjoyed the Star Wars thing. Um, but I wanted a story that, um, had a lot to do with just themes of redemption and, um, just those types of things. And as you get into the story, you'll start seeing that. Um, it, so our story is basically, we have two sons, fear bears. Um, one of them is trained in secret, um, because of reasons as you start getting into the book. Um, and then the other one um, is on the other side, and he is not trained in secret, but his dad is fighting on the other side with the Dark Lord. Um, and then all of that is because of a um, secret from the past, um, a deception that has been spun. So a lot of the book and throughout the series is, has a lot to do with um, the importance of truth and the fact that um, when you have deception and those kind of things that that can kind of really change things and that can, and the truth can actually be the thing that can win a battle. Um, so the book does have a lot of things as far as your traditional, um, blasters and tanks and stuff that you're lots of explosions that you're blowing up stuff. Um, so that all that fun stuff, cause you have to have that in a fantasy and a sci-fi thing going. Um, but there's a lot of other things that are going on that are much deeper um, level. And I think some of that also comes from my counseling background. Um, so you'll see a lot of um, of the that part of it coming into play with a lot of inner battles that are going on and things like that. So that's true. I did find that um, there are a lot of social issues you hit on like listening to your own intuition, having an inner voice. Um, I really like how the revenge was twisted in the story. You know, it's even sweeter when it's the other bad guy doing it for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, just that ability to hold off and do the right thing at the right time. Dealing with grief. How about treating injuries? Because that was a big thing in here. Do you have a back, a medical background? Um, no, I actually do not. Um, so I just um, went with 
I wanted to pay particular attention to that because the two characters, they, they're very good fighters, but when they, they get hurt, they tend to go all out. So, cause they get into scraps and so they tend to be um, very similar in that way. And there's going to be some other similarities that they share, but um, they're going to move towards each other. But um, yeah, I did like to have fun with that because um, my, the girl and she doesn't have a name for the whole book. She won't have a name for the second book. She does get a name the third book, but it's not going to be true, her true name. Um, so you won't get the name, her true name until the very last book in the series. But um, she, she does tend to rush into stuff um, because she just is so adamant about wanting to do the right thing and get get things done. And Dante is the same way to the other spear bearer. So they do share that characteristics of even if they're hurt and they're like bleeding or something, they're just like, I need to move on. So. Do you have children? I do. I have a 10 year old son and I have a 15 year old son. So. Oh, that makes two boys. That makes sense. <laughs> Cause boys are really good about getting injuries and keep moving on. <laughs> Yes, they are. They are. All right. And then there's always that, you know, when you least expect it, that somebody is watching out for you or somebody is just looking over you to help you through the tough times. Why, yes. was, the, why was that an important element for you? And how does it maybe come up in your counseling? Well, it, it did... I wanted there to be something that they could kind of hold on to. Um, it's I, my um, personally, I'm, I'm a Christian. And so my Christian faith does come through themes in the book, but I didn't want it to be a book to, that it was only um, for Christian readers. So I wanted it to be something that anybody that picked it up could enjoy. And it could be something that um, they could, they could find a really good storyline and they would enjoy it. Um, but somebody that um, was of that faith that they could also, they would pick up on those things. So it's not, it's, um, it's advertised as just, you know, a really good storyline. So, um, so part of that is me just personally that I find comfort in, in my faith. So, um, so I wanted them to be able to do that, but I didn't, um, didn't want it to be specifically uh, focused on that. Um, but personally, um, I find in my counseling that, you know, all the time there's people that are going through things um, and that you have to be available. I mean, even if you just have to be available and make sure that you're always there to, to even if it's just an encouraging word or something, I mean, you don't have to be a counselor to, to give those things and just, um, show empathy and for people for what they're going through. And some of the themes in the book, um, just the fact that especially the girl, she's told things all through the book that are not true, um, especially by her father as you get into it, that um, because he's not a very nice person at all. So, um, and so she's told things that are not true, that she's worthless and whatever it is. And, and people are told that all the time. They're told things that are not true and they're spun things. And so they have to fight really hard not to um, believe those things. And so that's what I find a lot in my counseling, just in general, that people are told lies and that that influences and shapes how the, they approach things and they approach their life and so it, that's the kind of the unseen battle that we deal with every day that we we believe lies about ourselves and about other things and how our world operates and then that influences how we react at times so I thought that was really well done the Christian touches in it I didn't think that they were um I didn't think it was something that you would label as a Christian novel. But I thought it was more stayed true to the fundamental beliefs 
of, you know, the commandments, maybe. But just, you know, how to treat yourself, how to treat others, how to accept help, you know, even right. though it might be from a stranger that you know yes. nothing about. And looking out for other people. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was trying for, so... Oh, you definitely did it. It was an exciting, well, <laughs> fast-paced read. It did seem a little bit like Star Wars at times, but a completely, like, different episode. <laughs> and it was just really well done. I love how the characters came together. And yes, how many... I do love, oh. love the characters. <laughs> I thought all of the characters were great. The bad guys were really bad. You love to hate them. Yes. Well, that's one of my things. It's like if you're going to have a bad character and a villain, they have to be they have to be a villain. I mean, so you have to have a reason for to fight them. So definitely. Yeah, so. No, and it made sense in a lot of places. I like the almost mythological type characters that come up in it too yes that was I had really, that. yeah <laughs> so how long have you been writing well I've actually that first book came out in 2019 and I mean I've always been a, a good writer like as far as just in school and stuff but I never I didn't start writing until I did the series. Um, so it was one of those things that the story had been in my head forever. And I started to put pieces of it gradually. And then finally it was just like, you know, let me just go ahead and write it and just see how it comes out. And then once I started writing, it just came together and the story was there. And, and then I had the whole thing written. And actually, book one and book two were written together. And when I got towards, started getting towards the end of book two, I was looking at it and I'm like, this is going to be way too long for one book, especially by a, um, a new author. If you're established, then get to the point where people are like, oh, you know, anything that comes out by your favorite author, you're just going to pick up. But if you're a new author, they're not going to do that. So that's when I decided to split the first and second one up. So, How many books will be in the series? That is going to be a mystery to everybody, including the author here. Um, <laughs> because I know how the story is going to end. Um, I know how the big battle is going to end. And I know like events that I have to have happen to get me there. But as far as how many books, I'm anticipating it's going to take at least six. But I don't know for sure mm -hmm. because it's one, when I finish telling the story, then that's when it's going to end. So I don't know. So minimally <laughs> six? Minimal six. So, Well, that's good. Because I think fantasy fans are getting more hooked into storylines and they love those bigger series. Because you just want it to go on and on. Especially when you get attached to the characters and... You know, they make you feel good about things that may be going on in your own life. Yes, and that's what I try to do. Um, I do have a newsletter that I do monthly, and that's one of the sections I have in there. It's called a Perspective, basically, from the author. And I try to take everyday world that we live in, and not necessarily like politics and stuff like that, but just like something that happened to me. And then I try to tie it into the world, the sun spear world, because I think a lot of the battles that we deal with on an everyday basis are very similar to what they deal with. I mean, it may not be with a sun spear or a, a blaster and stuff, but some of the issues, like I said, what I was talking about earlier, just um, things that happen where we feel we're made to, we believe things that aren't true and stuff. Those are battles that we deal with every day. So I've had incidents um, just with stuff my kids have done or something or just, you know, little things that you go through that challenge you. And um, those, those are similar to what um, they deal with. But 
you know, we don't think of them because we don't think in terms of that kind of scale. Cause it's like, you know, they're fighting to, to free the whole galaxy from this, um, dark Lord. But, um, we have battles every day that, you know, that we have to deal with. And so we have to go through the same kind of things. And so I do that, um, because I think it is very similar. So. Well, I thought you did a really good job with the whole redemption, sacrifice themes in the book. They weren't overly done where, you know, the guy or girl, you know, does something right so they're redeemed. That there, it was actually a trial to get there. And they yes. had to go through things and some people were unforgivable. Yeah, yeah. So, but you did have great justice, and it was a great twist. Yes, <laughs> so awesome. It was satisfying. I really enjoyed it. And then, yes, I had a good time writing that scene. <laughs> and then that connection between Dante and the girl in the central area. So, were there? You know, it's like possibly like being an author where people read little tidbits about you and they think they know you. And then you haven't got to meet and then you do get to meet. And there's just that instant connection. Although they haven't met yet. But I imagine that's how it's going to be. So I'm looking forward to seeing where yes. book two goes. Well, have to see. Um, like I said, in the third book, she does get a name. And it has to do with um, there's a, a meeting that's been long awaited. And so in the third book, then that part is part of how she gets her name. So, um, so well, y'all just have to see. You'll have to read it through the third book and get it. Well, you were really <laughs> good about having like purposefully unclear or mysterious events happen along the way. But the ending was really smooth the way that you tied it all together it gave it because it kind of gave the reader peace like I, it's okay i'll forgive her and i'll wait for book two yeah okay <laughs> that was so it was really well done so when did book two come out or is it out Book two is out um book two has been out since october of last year it's called Deceptions Hold, and so that one's been out, and book three actually just came out October of this year, so it's, and it's called Shadowed Bond. So can you give us a little insights into book two and three? Um, book two, um, book two, they are... I actually have it right here. Book two, this is the cover for book two. And this is, Dante is, has set off to do a task that he has to do from, if you read book one, you'll find out what that task is. So he is very conflicted on having to do that. And it puts him in a very dangerous position. The girl is still continuing to help them um, unawares, kind of. They know that somebody's helping them, but they don't know who she is. So she is, she and Alina, her um, comrade, they are doing their own thing to try to find out what the Dark Lord is planning. So they are in their own dangerous position because they're going to have to go under behind enemy lines to go do that again. So, um, and then we have, at the end of book two, we have a big confrontation that is going to, um, when he goes to, to do his task. So that's going to be the big, um, all that's going to come together. So book three is Shadow Bonds, and they did an amazing job with the cover once again at Arcane Covers. I'm um, so that one opens up something really bad has happened. We have a lot of destruction. So it's kind of the unthinkable has happened. 
And so you'll just have to read on to find out what that unthinkable is. Um, we do have a meeting that has been awaited and anticipated. It finally happens. But there is something um, that also, like, the, there's some destruction, but there's also another event that's happened that there's kind of a grief that's overshadowed because of that. Um, and they found out that they, the battle is far from over. Um, and there's a new threat from the black dragon that's been created. And so they're going to have to fight that. But we find that the girls inner demons, as we might say, um, they've kind of taken a life of their own mm -hmm. and they've gotten a lot worse. And so now she's really struggling to, um, keep from those taking her under control. So, um, so that's basically book three is a lot about bonds that are being established and have already been established, but some of those bonds are good ones, but some of them are very bad ones. And so those are going to come, um, come into play. So that's book three is, is a little different. Um, when will book three be released? Book three has been released. Book three has been out since October. Of this year so do yeah you, do you do about a book a year then um that was the plan but I work full-time so all of my book writing and marketing and all of that has to be done in the evenings mm -hmm. and on the weekends and so um I can't promise that once a year, because right now, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm working on book four, and I think I've got maybe 10,000 words written because I've just been so slammed with stuff. So and how generally, it doesn't take me too long to write them. It actually takes me longer, it seems like, to revise them because I just I don't like the revising process. So, <laughs> so That part really must be sad. hard. What about it is? Do you have an editor that works with you? Um, I do. I don't really have an editor. I have someone that does kind of proofreading and, um, well, they do help some with the revising, but I do most of that myself. And I just, I, yeah, I just don't like the process. So uh, it's exceptionally well written. So you can tell you put a lot into it. Yeah, yeah, I did. And but the the writing itself really comes easy to me. I find to the I've gotten to the point where the characters I you just get to a point where you're the you're in their heads so long that you really know what comes next. You don't even have to I don't feel like I think about it anymore. I just so my rough drafts come really easy to me. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of authors say that they get their rough draft and they're just like it's kind of trash the first one, but I don't find that. I find my first drafts are pretty, they're pretty stable. I mean, they're not, I can, I can really work from them. So, but yeah, so, but I, my characters are good. Like I, I can, I'm inside their heads. So that comes easy for me. So how do you build a character? Because they all have certain characteristics. Are they after people that you actually know? How does that all work? Yeah. For me, I just, like I said, I've had the story in my head for so long, and I just knew, like, they just started coming together. I mean, the girl and Dante were easy for me because I just already had that storyline, and then the rest of them just kind of pulled together. And certainly, I can't say that there's somebody that they took after um, I can I can see pieces of people I know like in all my characters. Well, hopefully not too much in the Dark Lord and in the um, Black Beauty because that would be rather frightening. <laughs> it would be really frightening, especially in this world. What about the cover art? The cover art is done by Arcane Book Covers, and they are amazing. That's the only word I can come up with. Um, so all of the books, the covers have something to do with 
every um, with something in the storyline. Mm-hmm. So I so the first book. Everything on that cover has something to do specifically with what's going on. So you'll see a blue eye, and that's because the girl has visions. And that is very, it's key throughout the whole series, but in the first book, it really sets some events off. Um, You have a dagger, and it was bloody, but I cleaned it up because I was having some issues with um, marketing on Amazon. So um, there is an event that happens in the first book or this happened in the past and um, it has to do with a bloody dagger. So um, the daggers, that's why that. And then two sun spears on the side are for Dante and the girl. And then the cloaked figure, of course, is for the Dark Lord. And just the darkness in general that sometimes is um, throughout the series. So, um, So that was the first book. The second book um, is um, is actually a picture of Dante's father. Um, so you'll see um, that one has half of a man's mm-hmm. uh, face, and then it has a black dragon helmet. Um, because the second book is all about the task that Dante um, has to go and do, and it has to do with his father. And so it's showing the two sides. Is he really, is his father really the person that raised Dante? Or is he really this black dragon um, commander that there's no hope for him to return? So so they all, like I said, are very focused on whatever's going on in that book. So, Well, thank you I for it. To- you did great. It was a great read, fast paced. One that you won't put down, and you did the chapters really nice, so we could, you know, feel like we could take a little bit of a break once in a while. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> it is good because you just keep going. Like oh, I have to find out what happens next. So it was really engaging. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That was the that was the point. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did, and thank you again for sharing. So much about how you created such a great series. And Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Until next time, keep asking questions. And if you're looking for a new Star Wars type of book, The Spinning Deception or the Sun Spear series, and Elizabeth Lavender will not let you down. We'll see you soon.